We the the dudes that we ended up recording the record with were the same two engineers that we had on the first album. Um, we had like this kind of bigger name producer who had worked with like Billy Talent and Three Days Grace and tons of stuff. Um, so we got him on board and he was really rad, but he had kind of like some different ideas and different approaches that we were sort of like next record around we were like we kind of learned all we needed to from that dude no no beef on him but we were just like maybe we'll save some money because you know like producers cost a lot we yeah. don't make a lot of money so we were just like let's kind of streamline this whole approach we'll keep the two guys that like we really vibed on and worked really well with and that was eric ratz and kenny luong who uh we were just like would you guys want to like produce this with us and kind of do that and we'll just like figure it out ourselves and so we were just like as far as like the songwriting goes we were just like writing as many songs as we could and then just like inviting as many people as we could to come and listen to them so like everyone who was in toronto at the time like um like some of the dudes from billy talent were around they practiced in the same building so we would get them to come and hang out and like ian would help us like out with some parts like oh why don't we try this or like why don't i play bass because we didn't have a bass player at the time so he was like playing bass on it we had like a lot of friends who would come and just play bass just so we could hear it so like billy from silverstein lived up the street and he was like killing time so i was like dude do you want to come and like just play bass or like just come and hang out and so he was just like you know riffing on like bastards waltz and we were like okay cool like that's like the bass line we'll use so and we would always just get like bros or like alexis on fire was in town and they're just like our best friends so we were just like dudes you got to come and hear this <laughs> and so it'd be like they heard like hail destroyer which is like one of the first songs we had written and they were just like that's awesome that's what your records would sound like and we were just like yeah that one's really heavy and they're like yeah you should just like make a heavy record we're like yeah we should right. we should wade mcneil <laughs> um who else do we have oh ben deso who was playing drums and throwdown oh, okay cool. he he was living in toronto and uh he had like a week where he was home but his girlfriend was at work so he came to the studio with us every day <laughs> and like helped us work on stuff and he's like an amazing songwriter i didn't even know we were just like growing down That's and so, so cool. he came in like helped us out a ton so it was cool to have like tons of friends influence and to make us feel like we were on the right track you know but maybe we do that we're like a band's band like we a lot of people who play in bands like our band maybe more so than kids but uh so as long as there's enough bands in the world <laughs> we'll sell records <laughs> that's our like that's our marketing strategy at this point but well, uh, uh you guys had some great guest spots on there as well Wigner, Neil, oh. Tim McGillerath, um, Ben.